Leute in der Kiste. Hey, how the devil are you? Who are you, Yoda? Anyway, look what we've got today. This is the SMSL PA hyphen X, okay? Or PAX, whatever you want to call it. And it's the, it's a power amp. And it has got bags of power. Um, it's a bit of a beast. And considering its size, it's quite, it's got a bit of heft to it. Okay, I think it's about two and a half kilograms, five or six pounds. So for its size, quite hefty. Anyway, let's bring you in for a closer look. Oh. Okay, there's not a lot to see on the front, is there? So let's turn it on so you can see it a little bit better. There we are. Now, even though there's a lot of real estate on the front, there's only a screen just to your left here. That's it. Okay, and there's your volume. Long press uh, to switch it on, long press to turn it off. Short press then will take you into your menu system. So you've got your amp mode here. So you can go in there and whether see what input you want, whether you want it RCA, XLR, or you can have it in mono mode, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, okay? But at the moment, I'm gonna keep it in XLR. Then you've got your load type, so you can change it from eight ohms to four ohms if you want. I've currently got it on set to eight ohm load. You can change your user interface style. I've got it on universal at the moment. You can change it on the graphics, so it'll, it'll be that. Um, you might like that. I don't know, you might like that way. I prefer uh, universal personally, but it's up to, completely up to you. Then you've got your dimmer. So if you want it to dim off or go off, you can change it to go off after 60 seconds and the screen will go off, I believe. I'm gonna keep it off, okay? Then you've got your brightness. There we are. You've got a reset button then, back to the top. And then you see the volume here tells you it's in stereo mode. Uh, it's connected via XLR at the moment and using an 8 ohm load. Okay, let's whack that off. That's enough for the front. Let's have a little look around the back. And here we are around the back. There's your on-off switch. Boink, boink, plug in. Speaker binding posts, line in, XLR balanced. Uh, everything on here is gold plated. Uh, it's got a lot of protection circuitry in it, really well made uh, thing, so no chance of it overheating. You see as it turned around, as it was spinning around, got these big heat sinks on the side. Uh, so there's no chance of it blowing up from overheating. It'll switch itself off before it gets to that. Now, if you want it in mono mode, what I was talking about earlier, you connect to this one and this one, okay? And it can only be done by XLR, not RCA. So you plug an XLR in here. So if you're going to use it in stereo, you're going to get 250 watts into four ohms and 200 watts into eight ohms in stereo, okay? If you use it in mono, you're going to get 500 watts into eight ohms. Well, that's what it says in the manual, okay? 500 watts per channel if you use two of these in mono. Now, why you would want to use 500, like 200 is not enough, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> you know, oh, 200 is not enough for me. <laughs> I need to drive um, some PA system in a stadium. So therefore, I'll get two of these 500 watts. So there we are. If you want to get two of these and fill your boots, you'll be able to, <laughs> there's nothing much you won't be able to power. Anyway, the specs are pretty good. Uh, signal to noise ratio is 115 dB. Total harmonic distortion plus noise is 0.003% and it has gallium nitride transistors or GANFETs, which is better than silicone. Oh, so they say. How do you know? Well, let's ask Disney Princess AI. In amplifier applications, GANFETs offer advantages over silicon FETs, particularly in high frequency and high power scenarios. GAN FETs exhibit faster switching speeds, lower on resistance, and higher power density, leading to improvements in efficiency, size reduction, and potentially better audio performance. However, GAN FETs are typically depletion mode devices, which can present challenges in some applications. Thank you very much. There's not a lot that Disney Princess doesn't know, okay? 
So if you've got any questions, let me know and I'll ask Disney Princess. Okay, so what do I think of it? Really good, <laughs> really good. Now I've been using it uh, with the Duke Audio K5 DAC. That's a, quite a, a, an expensive DAC, cost 90 quid. But I've also been using it with the Alpha Pro. I'll be reviewing this in a future video, so watch out for that. Very good DAC. Um, it's a lot better than this, but costs 600 quid, I think it's around about there. So not cheap, okay, but it's got a lot going for it. It's also a headphone amp, uh, uses a flagship DAC chip. So a very, very capable DAC. And it sounds good through both of them. So I tested it uh, and compared it against the Leak Stereo 230. And I want to compare, because this is class D and this is class AB. OMG, the Leak Stereo is also a class D amp. You're just comparing apples to apples. <laughs> Yeah, you won't believe I've actually had those comments. No, the Stereo 230 is a class AB amp. Just to clarify, it's Stereo 130 is a class D amp, all right? So get it right. So I wanted to compare a class D to a class AB. And for the life of me, I couldn't tell the difference. I was using an amp switcher here. So I used an amp switcher back and forth. Also speaker switcher switching between the Lintons, uh, Wolfdale Lintons and the Wolfdale 12.2s. And for the life of me, I couldn't tell the difference between the two. If I was doing a blind AB, I would never know which amp was playing. It was that close. I know sometimes you can go, oh, maybe that amp's got a bit more, a bigger sound stage, or this amp has a bit more bass. The mid-range on this one is a bit, nothing. Zip, nada, nout, okay? They both sounded exactly the same and both really good, all right? Um, so this has 75 watts per channel of into eight ohms. This has 200 watts per channel into eight ohms. Now I drove these at, I think, almost just about 289 dB, okay? From two meters away, <laughs> right? That's what I measured it from with my decibel meter. Play them pretty loud, drove them quite hard and Again, they, neither of them distorted. They both performed admirably, really well. Couldn't tell the difference. Now you could argue that with the SMSL, you've got balanced inputs. Um, and some people love a balanced input and some people get uh, quite irate over the fact that there's no balanced inputs on certain things. I had a comment recently saying, I wouldn't buy that. It's got no balanced inputs or outputs. Why I order, <laughs> right? Uh, I wouldn't get too hung up on balanced inputs and outputs. If I had a preference, uh, if I got a choice between using RCA or balanced, I would probably use the balanced input, but not for sound quality. I would use it more so because I feel I, I balanced inputs, XLRs especially, are a bit more substantial and give them a firmer connection, I think. But over short runs, I don't think there's any discernible difference in audio quality at all. In my experience, I've never heard any difference in audio quality when it's volume matched. Now, again, like with XLR, sometimes the voltage can be higher than RCA. So it may be louder, but not uh, better sound quality wise. So when you volume match them, I can't really hear a difference. Look, if you're running your amp uh, five meters away from the preamp, okay, or 10 meters away from the preamp, maybe, yeah, I would definitely, you know, consider using um, XLRs or balanced inputs or outputs. However, over short runs, you're not gonna, it's not gonna make much difference at all in sound quality apart from being a little bit louder. So essentially, what I'm trying to say is don't get too hung up on having, having balanced inputs, especially if you're, cable length is about a meter long, okay? I wouldn't worry about it. It's not as if you're working in a sound studio or you're a sound engineer working with tons of electrical equipment, okay? Uh, having long, long runs of cable. So don't worry about it too much. 
If you've got, I'll get some interference, maybe consider getting a better RCA cable. <laughs> there you go. Right, when it comes to the uh, power handling, obviously, you know, as I said, when I tested them, I couldn't hear the difference. However, you are kind of future-proofing yourself, I suppose, with the SMSL. Uh, because say you wanted to change your speakers at some point and it, you get extremely hard to drive uh, massive tower speakers with a low sensitivity or something like that. You know, you've got that extra juice there. So it opens you up for, for your future proof of yourself, essentially. So it, there is that. When it comes to price, um, you could say, oh, it was pretty expensive at, you know, £500. Uh, yeah, it is, it is reasonably expensive. Um, and if you have to get a preamp or a DAC with, like, say for this one, this one will cost, you don't have to get this one. You could get that, right? It sounds pretty good with that, right? Um, but this one costs 600, I think it is. So you're looking at 1100, 1150 quid. The Leak Stereo 230, um, that comes in at around 1200, I think it is, 1250, around about there. So they're very similarly priced. Uh, so it would depend on aesthetics, whether you prefer the look of that to that how much space you've got, how much space do you need. This might be too big to go where you want to put it. So either or, uh, you can't go wrong with. Obviously, you get the balanced inputs with this one here um, and outputs, uh, but you don't get a HDMI, which it has. So swings and roundabouts, really. And obviously, this has a phono stage. This doesn't. You'd have to get a separate phono stage. Mm, that could be a deal breaker. But all in all, I think the SMSL uh, packs is a very good power amplifier. Got plenty of juice in there to power pretty much anything. Anyway, that's come to the end of the video. Now I will do a sound test because I know you like the sound test. It's pretty pointless because I guarantee you probably won't know which one is. If you close your eyes, when I do the blind sound test, you won't know which one's playing because they sound exactly the same. <laughs> I couldn't hear the difference. Maybe you've got better ears than me. Anyway, uh, hang on for the sound test that's coming and I'll catch you in the next one.